Hi all, I am continuing with the same set of notes from section 11.6 that the absolute and conditional convergence was a part of, um, but now I'm gonna talk about the ratio test. Um, so I'll remind you the limit comparison test is a really precise tool. So as long as the simplified series looks like a P series or a geometric series, it's gonna answer all your questions, totally takes care of it. But, so remember that means anything that has polynomials in it is gonna turn into a P series, K to a power. Anything that has exponentials in it, like two to the K or three to the K, is gonna turn into a geometric series in the simplified version. But if you have things that are neither, like K factorial or natural log of K, or if you have products, a polynomial times an exponential, then typically limit comparison test won't help you because it will reduce to something that we don't know the answer of. We don't know whether it converges. In that case, often the ratio test will help, but uh, there's a typo, um, but it tends to be a crude tool. So it often doesn't give you any answer. Here's the idea in a geometric series, remember each term of the series is r times the previous. And if the absolute value of r is less than one, that means the terms are getting small so fast that they add up to a finite number. If it's greater than or equal to one, they're getting bigger and it fails to, to add up to a finite number. If you take any old series and then look at the ratio of successive terms of the series, if it's always the same constant, if it's always a half, then it is a geometric series. If not, what if it just approaches one half as you go further out in the sequence, further out in the terms? So if, your ser if the ratio of successive terms in your series is getting close to some number r as k gets large, then it's gonna behave like a k series, uh, like a geometric series with that r. Um, and in that case, it will converge or diverge as if it was, as if you were using the geometric series test. So here's the precise version of the ratio test. You look at the absolute value of the ratio of successive terms of the series as the index, you take a look at the limit of that as the index goes to infinity and you call that R. So this is what I mean. A K is the kth term of your series, the thing inside the sum. A K plus one is the next term, the one right after it. You take the ratio, absolute value, limit as k goes to zero. If that approaches some number, you call the number r, and then here is the ratio test. The series converges absolutely if r is less than one. It diverges if r is greater than one, and it doesn't tell you anything if r equals one. Let me tell you how hard I worked to get that emoji into a LaTeX document. Um, okay, so unlike the limit comparison test, it's pretty easy for us to fall into class three where we don't know. So in that case, it won't help. Otherwise, it will work perfectly. It's kind of hard to do this. So we're gonna start with three examples that you can tell whether or not they converge without needing the ratio test. So they're silly examples in the sense that, that we're we're doing overkill here, but you will see how the calculations go and be able to use that practice in the future. Okay, um, first off, we're gonna look at the sum from zero to infinity of one over three to the K. That of course is a geometric series with R equals one third, so it converges. But we're gonna pretend we don't know that. We're gonna do the ratio test. So here's how you start the ratio test. You write out a big fraction, and in the denominator, you put whatever is inside the sum. That's a k, that goes in the denominator. Um, if I were calling on you in the class and asked you how to start, and you're nervous, you could just say, well, the denominator is, and say what's ever next to the sigma, okay? That's the easy step. Next, on top, you put the exact same formula but everywhere where you see a K, 
you replace it with a k plus one. Okay. Um, that's a sub k plus one. Then you put absolute values around it and you take the limit as k goes to infinity. Okay. If you can write out that step, you've already done a lot. Okay, once you have done that, I'm gonna erase all of that. Um, whoops, sorry. I'm going to erase all of that so we can see the expression more clearly. Um, once you have um, written that out, looks pretty messy because just like in the limit comparison, you've got a limit of a ratio of ratios. First thing to do, just like in limit comparison, is flip the denominator. Make the bottom of the bottom the top, make the top of the bottom the bottom. At the same time, we can generally get rid of the absolute values. So in this case, the top and bottom are both positive, so we just throw them away. If that's not true, what will typically be getting in the way is there'll be some alternating term, a minus one to the k. The absolute value of minus one to the k is one. So that will generally just disappear. We will see examples of that later. So this three to the k and then the denominator of the denominator moves up to the numerator times the one in the original numerator. This one, the top of the bottom, moves to the bottom times the original bottom three to the k plus one, okay? So once we've thrown away the absolute values and fixed it up, this is a much simpler um, expression. And now, uh, but now to simplify that, you need the rule of exponents. We've got same base three ratio <coughs> with different exponents. So you subtract the exponents. The bigger one's on the bottom. So I'm going to write um, on the bottom, 3 to the k plus 1 minus k, which is just 3 to the 1 or 3, okay? So this whole thing looked really messy to start with, got somewhat simpler, and then it just became 1 third. That's always going to happen when you have an exponential term anywhere in your expression and you use the ratio test, you're gonna end up with an exponential to the k and an exponential to the k plus one, and the ratio is gonna cancel out. You're just gonna get one copy of that base in the top or the bottom. Um, and uh, that will become very simple. So we get r equals one third. Remember what the ratio test says. It's if r is less than one, then it's absolutely convergent. So our series is absolutely convergent. You should think of this as saying that we got back r equals one third, which is in fact, it was a geometric series with r equals one third. So not surprisingly, we're getting uh, in the limit, the ratio of successive terms is r. All right, next example. Um, let's take one over k squared. Now we've got a polynomial, a power of k, instead of k in the exponent. In this case, this is a p-series, p equals 2, we know it converges. So ratio test is pointless, but again, we need to practice. Um, so original term, 1 over k squared, goes in the denominator. In the numerator, you put the exact same thing, but everywhere you see a k, you put a k plus 1. It's often happened, have, helpful to put parentheses around that k plus 1 so you don't get confused. So 1 over k squared becomes 1 over k plus 1 squared. Absolute values go around it. Limit as k goes to infinity. That's the starting point. Next step, flip the denominator over. Notice everything is positive. So the k squared down here becomes k squared up here. The k plus 1 squared here becomes k plus 1 squared here, and the absolute values disappear. So we've got the limit as k goes to infinity of k squared over k plus 1 squared. Now we use our usual limit tricks. The usual limit tricks say, here, let's clean up again. The usual limit tricks say we cross out the lower order terms because k grows faster than 1. We can throw away the 1. 
we get k squared over k squared, which equals 1. Uh, that's always going to happen when there are polynomials. You're going to get a polynomial in k, then you're going to get um, a polynomial in k plus 1. As k goes to infinity, all those plus 1s stop mattering, and the whole thing becomes 1. That's bad news, because that means our r equals 1, and if you remember, our r equals 1 is the case where the ratio test tells you nothing. Um, you can think of all anything involving polynomials, powers of k, is so approaching zero so slowly that it looks like a geometric series with r equals 1, which doesn't converge. So in that case, um, the ratio test doesn't help. OK, last example, k factorial, 1 over k factorial. We tried this with the comparison test and saw that it converged. Let's see, see the same thing happening in the ratio test. On the bottom, we put 1 over k factorial. On the bottom, we put 1 over k factorial, and then we erase k and put in parentheses k plus 1. So we've got 1 over k factorial over 1 over k, 1 over k plus 1 factorial over 1 over k factorial. Usual thing. So I'm going to put it up here in its original form so you can compare. Everything's positive, throw away the absolute values. Bring k factorial up to the numerator. k plus 1 factorial is in the denominator. We are left with k factorial over k plus 1 factorial. Now, here's, here's a really important trick that you will need over and over again. We need to remember the recursive definition of the factorial sequence. Remember, k plus 1 factorial is k plus 1 times k factorial, right? 5 factorial equals 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which equals 5 times 4 factorial. You always get the next factorial by multiplying the previous one by that number. So k plus 1 factorial is k plus 1 times k factorial. That means that a ratio k plus 1 factorial divided by k factorial so if we take k plus 1 factorial and divide by k factorial, that leaves k plus 1. If we flip that over, k factorial over k plus 1 factorial leaves 1 over k plus 1. Okay, So this ratio, limit as k goes to infinity of k factorial over k plus 1 factorial is, I kind of skipped a step here, the limit 1 over k plus 1, right? k factorial over k plus 1 factorial is 1 over k plus 1. That's the same as 1 over k, which is 0. OK, that's a deep argument. I was not expecting you to think of that yourself. But every time we see a factorial, the exact same argument will happen. You will see, maybe in the numerator, maybe in the denominator, a k factorial and a k plus 1 factorial and you will cancel them out, leaving a k plus 1. In some cases, maybe maybe it's going to be a k factorial or something. I mean, maybe it's going to be a k. And then you're going to take the limit, as always, once you do that. What that tells you is, because the limit is 0, r equals 0, 0 is less than 1, so that is absolutely convergent. Okay. The moral here is k factorial grows faster than any geometric series. So 1 over k factorial is getting small faster than any geometric series. So it is acting like a geometric series with r equals 0. OK, in a typical example, you have to put those three cases together. And let me show you how that goes in a few more examples. So let's look at k squared over 2 to the k. So we start. In the denominator, we put k squared over 2 to the k. In the numerator, you put the exact same thing, but everywhere where you saw a k, you put parentheses k plus 1. Okay. 
You don't have to put the parentheses if it's in the exponent, but it never hurts. Next step, make sure everything is positive or is a minus one to a power, which you can just take the absolute value of as one. And then bring two to the k, that is bottom of the bottom to the top. k plus one squared stays on top. k squared stays on bottom. Two to the k plus one stays on bottom. Next, when you see this all still very complicated expression, the next thing to do, you'll get pretty quickly. Quick, good at this quickly, but for now, think of it as a step. You want to put things with their friends, okay? Um, two to the k is friends with two to the k plus one, so we'll put them together. K plus one squared is friends with k squared, so we'll put those together. And then, uh, then we will whoops, break that up into two limits. Remember, the limit of a product is the product of the limits. So well, let's look at all the green stuff, which is two to a power, separately from all the blue stuff, which is a power of k. Okay, And each of those we handle the way we did before, namely, 2 to the k over 2 to the k plus 1 by the rules of exponents is 1 half. So we don't even have to take a limit. On the other hand, k plus 1 squared, I wrote this upside down. I'm so sorry. So this is backwards, but it doesn't matter. It's k squared plus 2k plus 1 over k squared, um, which is when you throw away the lower order terms, k squared over k squared. You could also throw away the lower order terms here k plus 1 squared, when k is large, is the same as k squared. Um, and the whole thing becomes, so the first term becomes 1, 1 half. The second term becomes 1. When you multiply them, you get 1 half. That is less than 1. So the series is absolutely convergent by the ratio test. Let's do another example. Let's do k plus 1 over k cubed plus 1. Everything there is a polynomial. That means you're going to see everything. The ratio test is just going to get you one. So this is not going to help. But I want you to see it in some examples. On the bottom, we put the individual terms, k plus 1 over k cubed plus 1. On the top, we write the exact same thing. But everywhere where you saw a k, replace it with parentheses k plus 1 k cubed becomes k plus 1 cubed, k becomes k plus 1, both of them we add 1. Big horrible mess, but the first step, everything's positive, throw away the absolute values, take uh, the bottom of the bottom and put it on top, top of the top goes on top, I added up the 1 and the 1, um, you don't have to. The k plus 1 is on the bottom, and the k plus 1 cubed plus 1 is also on the bottom. As k goes to infinity, anything, as k goes to infinity, k plus 1 behaves just like k. So that goes, we can throw away the 1, we can throw away the 2, we can throw away the 1, we can throw away the 1. And then this becomes k cubed plus 1, we can also throw away that 1. So we get k cubed times k over k cubed times k, which is 1. This is what always happens. Ratio test gives you 1. Get, take a look at this last example. 2 to the k over k factorial. So we learn nothing. Okay. Um, so let's write that up at the top. 2 to the k over k factorial. Um, uh, right, so um, before I go on, I should just say, you can think of k squared, square root of k, those are kind of small ticket, cheap items. Exponentials, k factorial, are black credit card, 
expensive items. Polynomials are like pay with cash. Um, and the ratio test is for the big ticket items. If you see things like two to the k and k factorial in it, it's gonna work. If all you see is powers of k, square roots, things like that, go with a limit comparison test. Okay, so on the bottom, we put two to the k over k factorial. On the top, we replace, we write the same thing. Everywhere you see a k, you put a parentheses k plus one. So two to the k plus one over k plus one factorial. Throw away the absolute values, move, that k factorial in the bottom of the bottom to the top, move, uh, keep two to the k plus one on top, keep k plus one factorial on the bottom, and two to the k on the top of the bottom, moves to the bottom. Okay, put friends together, two to the k plus one over two to the k, combine to form two to the k plus one over two to the k. We'll write that as a limit. And then this should be a times here, not an equals, sorry. The k factorial and the k plus one factorial are friends. So they form their second limit. Two to the k plus one over two to the k is two, okay? That may be tricky the first couple of times you do it, but you're doing the same thing every time. So two to the k time, oh, two to the k plus one over two to the k becomes two. 1 over k plus 1, 1 over k factorial over k plus 1 factorial becomes 1 over k plus 1. That's the magic of factorials. Remember the recursive definition, or just remember 5 factorial equals 5 times 4 factorial, because it's 5 times 4, 3, 2, 1. And then as k goes to infinity, 1 over k plus 1 goes to 0. 0 is less than 1. So the series converges absolutely. Okay, here's some more examples. And if you stop and think about where are the exponentials, where are the powers of k, where are the factorials, you will begin to get a sense when you look at a problem, you will start to be able to say in words how the ratio test is going to work. Okay, uh, take care until next time when we will start to put all of these together and use decide which test to use.